consciousness, my eyes flickered open, adjusting to the dim light within the confined space of the elevator. The air felt heavy, and a sense of disorientation overwhelmed me. As I regained my bearings, I realized that the lift was still motionless. The realization of my predicament hit me like a wave. I had been trapped for almost 18 hours now. Panic surged through me as I recalled my futile attempts to seek help through the emergency button and my cell phone, which was devoid of any network signal. The darkness outside the lift intensified my feelings of isolation. I glanced around, my eyes searching for any possible escape route. The closed door thwarted my attempts to communicate with the outside world. Frustration set in, and I began to feel the weight of my confinement. Thoughts raced through my mind. No food, no water, and the agonizing prospect of remaining in this enclosed space until Monday. Desperation fueled my actions. I stood near the door, shouting for help, hoping that someone would hear my pleas. The silence that followed my cries only heightened my anxiety. The realization that the weekend cleaning staff would not be available until Monday compounded my sense of isolation. In an attempt to alleviate the growing sense of suffocation, I loosened my tie and unbuttoned my shirt. Beads of sweat dotted my forehead as I contemplated my options. The absence of a network signal on my phone added to the gravity of my situation. I could feel my energy draining with each passing moment. As I surveyed my surroundings, my eyes caught sight of a net above. A glimmer of hope ignited within me, but the realization of my physical limitations dampened it. Sweating profusely, I considered jumping to reach the net, but dismissed the idea due to my height disadvantage. The stifling atmosphere inside the elevator intensified my discomfort. Thoughts of being trapped began to permeate my mind raising unsettling questions about my fate. Was I destined to die in this confined space? The lack of oxygen and water loomed as potential threats to my survival. Abruptly, the temperature inside the lift surged, as if an invisible force had set the surroundings ablaze. The rising heat, combined with my growing sense of despair, pushed me to the brink. My lips trembled my legs gave way. Darkness enveloped my vision as I succumbed to unconsciousness. A sudden, loud, squeaking sound pierced through the oppressive silence, jolting me back to consciousness. My eyes fluttered open, and I found myself still trapped in the immobile elevator. The ordeal continued, and the unknown awaited beyond the closed doors. Only companions in this eerie confinement Panic surged through me as the wave of rodents approached. I scrambled to the farthest corner of the lift, desperate to evade the encroaching horde. The flickering light in the elevator added an unsettling ambience to the already horrifying scene. The rats moved with a synchronized chaos, their collective presence amplifying the sense of dread that enveloped me. As they swarmed in, sharp, high-pitched hissing filled the air. In my frantic attempt to escape, I noticed the peculiar damp mark on the walls again. The black liquid on my hand served as a visceral reminder of the mysterious and unsettling nature of this place. The dampness seemed to emanate from a grotesque opening that resembled a door, adorned with a clump of hair hanging from within. While grappling with the repulsive surroundings, I heard distant shouts once more. The disconcerting noises echoed in the confined space, amplifying the surreal nature of my predicament. Was there another presence in this nightmarish maze? Or was it a figment of my tormented imagination? Driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, I approached the hole from which the rats had emerged earlier 
Peering into the darkness, I strained my eyes to discern any signs of what lay beyond. Suddenly, a long, unnerving creature slithered out, moving in a manner that defied the laws of nature. My plea for help became more desperate as the surreal horror unfolded around me. The creature's tongue, resembling that of an otherworldly entity, only added to the bizarre and terrifying spectacle. I felt trapped in a nightmare from which I desperately yearned to awaken. As the situation escalated, the elevator's light began to flash erratically. Panic seized me, and I frantically pressed the buttons, yearning for an end to this nightmarish ordeal. The elevator seemed to mock my desperation, refusing to respond to my frantic attempts to escape. In a moment of sheer desperation, I impulsively grabbed the creature that had emerged from the hole. The hissing sound intensified, reaching a crescendo as I pulled at the enigmatic entity. The nightmarish reality around me blurred as I tugged at the creature's tail. With an abrupt jerk, the tail came loose, sending me tumbling backward. To my horror, the hole now unleashed a torrent of rats, pouring into the elevator like a relentless tide. The foul stench and the sight of the countless rodents overwhelmed my senses, inducing a nauseating sensation. The elevator, once a solitary space, was now transformed into a ghastly scene reminiscent of a horror movie. Thousands of rats, with their twitching whiskers and gleaming eyes, filled every available inch. The surreal nightmare continued, with the unsettling presence of the rats intensifying the dread that had consumed me. Accident on the radio, but we decided to continue our journey. The road was deserted, and the wind howled ominously outside. As we approached our destination, a sense of unease settled over the car. The flickering streetlights cast eerie shadows on the road, creating an unsettling atmosphere. When we arrived at the party, it was not what we had expected. The house seemed abandoned, with broken windows and creaking doors. Reluctantly, we entered, only to find empty rooms filled with an oppressive silence. The air felt heavy, and an inexplicable sense of dread lingered in every corner. As we explored further, we stumbled upon a room with a flickering light. The source of the light was an old television playing a grainy video. The images on the screen depicted the same elevator, the same rats, and the same horrifying ordeal. It was as if the very essence of our nightmares had materialized before us. Suddenly, the video glitched, and a distorted voice echoed through the room. Don't get on the elevator, it warned, sending shivers down our spines. The realization hit us. The story we had just experienced was not confined to our imagination. The horrors of that elevator extended beyond the confines of our minds. As we tried to leave the eerie house, the doors slammed shut, trapping us inside. The air grew colder, and an unseen force seemed to guide us through a series of unsettling events. Shadows danced on the walls and the sound of echoing footsteps reverberated through the desolate corridors. With each passing moment, the boundary between reality and nightmare blurred. We were no longer in control of our destinies, mere pawns in a malevolent game. The ominous presence of the elevator, the rats, and the mysterious creature lingered, haunting us in every corner of that forsaken house. The nightmare persisted, with no escape in sight. As we grappled with the surreal horror surrounding us, a chilling truth unfolded. The elevator, with its inexplicable terrors, had transcended the confines of time and space, ensnaring us in its nightmarish grip. As the distorted voice continued to 
whisper warnings. We were left to confront the relentless descent into madness. The line between the real and the surreal became indistinguishable, and the once familiar reality warped into a distorted realm of fear and despair. Our journey through the haunted house became an eternal loop, each repetition intensifying the horror, the chilling whispers, the flickering lights, and the ghastly images of the elevator replayed in an endless cycle, trapping us in a perpetual nightmare from which there seemed to be no escape. And so the story unfolds, an unsettling tapestry woven with the threads of fear and uncertainty. The elevator, with its enigmatic horrors, continues to cast its shadow over our consciousness, a lingering reminder that some nightmares are not confined to the realm of dreams. They manifest in the recesses of our reality, waiting to ensnare the unsuspecting souls who dare to tread into the unknown. An eerie feeling, but we dismissed it as the product of tiredness and the peculiar atmosphere of the place. As we ascended the creaking stairs to the third floor, the air grew heavier and a musty odor filled the narrow hallway. The dimly lit corridor revealed peeling wallpaper and flickering lights that cast unsettling shadows. The feeling of unease lingered, but our exhaustion overshadowed any apprehension we might have felt. Upon reaching our designated rooms, we fumbled with the rusty keys and entered the dimly illuminated spaces. The rooms were as expected, worn out furniture, a musty scent, and a dim light that barely penetrated the darkness. The sound of rain tapping on the windows added to the eerie ambience. Despite the worn out appearance, we were grateful for the shelter from the storm. We settled in, discussing the strange circumstances of our journey and the peculiarities of the motel. The hours passed and fatigue eventually overcame our initial discomfort. We dimmed the lights and tried to rest, hoping for a better day ahead. In the middle of the night, I was jolted awake by a soft knocking on the door. Disoriented and half awake, I hesitated before unlocking the door. To my surprise, there was no one outside. The hallway remained empty, shrouded in darkness and silence. A sense of foreboding crept over me as I closed the door, questioning the nature of the mysterious knocking. As the night wore on, the strange occurrences continued. Whispers echoed through the hallway and shadows danced on the walls. The oppressive atmosphere became palpable, casting a shadow over our uneasy sleep. The dim light flickered intermittently, adding to the surreal ambience. The following morning, we awoke to a gloomy scene. The storm had subsided, but the fog outside lingered, creating an ethereal landscape. We decided to check out, eager to leave behind the unsettling motel and its mysterious ambience. As we descended the stairs, the owner appeared once more. His eyes held a glint of secrecy, and he simply nodded, bidding us farewell without uttering a word. The peculiar encounter left us with unanswered questions, but the need to distance ourselves from the eerie motel took precedence. Our journey resumed, and the memories of the mysterious motel gradually faded. Yet, the inexplicable occurrences and the unsettling atmosphere of that night lingered in the recesses of our minds. A lingering reminder of the strange detour we had taken on that stormy night. The mysterious motel, with its hidden secrets and unspoken warnings, remained etched in our memories as a chilling tale
from a journey that defied the ordinary. Distorted, and when the image cleared, Marcus was nowhere to be seen. The police were baffled, unable to provide any logical explanation for Marcus's disappearance. Haunted by the memories of the eerie motel and the horrifying encounter with the man holding a severed head, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a connection between the two incidents. The sinister smile, the lifeless eyes, and the gruesome trophy in the man's hand echoed in my mind. As the investigation into Marcus's disappearance unfolded, the unsettling truth emerged. The notorious serial killer, whose heinous crimes had plagued the town, had somehow transcended the boundaries of time and space. The motel, with its mysterious aura, served as a portal to a nightmarish dimension where the past and present intertwined. The police delved deeper into the motel's dark history, uncovering a series of unsolved disappearances and gruesome murders. The owner, now identified as an accomplice to the serial killer, had eluded justice for years. The revelation sent shivers down my spine as I realized the malevolent force that lurked within the confines of the motel. The encounters with the man in the elevator and the subsequent disappearance of Marcus were not isolated incidents, but part of a macabre pattern that defied comprehension. The motel, once a temporary refuge from the storm, had become a gateway to a realm of unspeakable horrors. The inexplicable events that unfolded within its walls were etched in the annals of the town's darkest secrets. Haunted by the chilling memories, I couldn't escape the lingering fear that the malevolent force still lingered, ready to ensnare unsuspecting souls. The motel, now abandoned and shrouded in an eerie silence, stood as a grim testament to the inexplicable and the horrifying. As the news of the serial killer's capture spread, the town grappled with the unsettling truth that the motel had been a nexus of terror. The once forgotten building became a symbol of dread, its dark corridors echoing with the whispers of the past. The mysteries of that fateful night and the sinister encounters within the motel continued to torment me. The inexplicable nature of the events defied rationality, leaving me with an enduring sense of unease. The motel, with its haunted history, remained etched in my mind as a place where reality twisted into a nightmarish dimension, blurring the lines between the living and the unseen. And so, the chilling tale of the motel and its malevolent secrets became a cautionary legend, a whispered warning to those who dared to tread the path of the unknown. The shadows of that night lingered, casting a perpetual darkness over the town, where the echoes of the past whispered in the silence of the abandoned motel, had an eerie silence about it, a palpable emptiness that sent shivers down my spine. The yellow tape served as a stark reminder of the mysterious disappearance that had unfolded just hours ago. With a hesitant breath, I stepped across the threshold into Marcus's home. The air inside felt heavy with the weight of the unknown. The rooms were dimly lit, casting long shadows that seemed to dance in response to my presence. As I explored the silent space, a chilling realization dawned upon me. Marcus's life had abruptly vanished, leaving behind only echoes of his presence. The mundane details of his apartment, from the neatly arranged furniture to the faint scent of his cologne, stood as remnants of a life interrupted. I 
couldn't shake the feeling that the answers to the enigma lay within the walls of this apartment. The ordinary surroundings took on an otherworldly quality, as if the very fabric of reality had unraveled in this quiet abode. My flashlight illuminated the rooms, revealing an ordinary existence disrupted by an inexplicable event. The investigation by the police had left its mark, and the yellow tape served as a haunting boundary between the known and the unknowable. As I stood in the midst of Marcus's home, the questions multiplied. What transpired in the moments leading to his disappearance? Was there a clue hidden within these walls? A key to unraveling the mystery that had gripped our building? The silence was deafening, broken only by the creaking of the floorboards beneath my footsteps. I hesitated at the closed bedroom door, a sense of trepidation overcoming me. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open, revealing a room frozen in time. The bedroom held a peculiar stillness, as if time had paused in the wake of Marcus's sudden absence. The bed was neatly made, personal belongings arranged with a meticulous touch. It was a snapshot of an ordinary day, abruptly halted by an extraordinary event. The window offered a view into the night, shrouded in the same fog that had veiled the building the night before. The dim glow of streetlights filtered through, casting an ethereal glow on the room. As I surveyed the room, my eyes were drawn to a peculiar detail, a framed photograph on the dresser. It captured Marcus's smiling face, frozen in a moment of happiness. The contrast between the joyful image and the current state of his apartment intensified the sense of disquiet. The realization hit me. Marcus, like the man with the severed head in the motel, had become a victim of the inexplicable forces that lurked within the building. The ordinary facade of our daily lives had been shattered, revealing the unsettling truth some mysteries defy explanation. In the eerie silence of Marcus's apartment, I grappled with the enigma that had unfolded. The questions lingered, echoing through the stillness, and the shadows seemed to hold secrets that eluded the grasp of rational understanding. The journey into the unknown had only just begun, and the unsettling mysteries of our building continued to unravel in unforeseen ways, and I hesitated to step out. The eerie silence was broken only by the distant hum of the malfunctioning elevator behind me. I cautiously entered the dark space, my phone's feeble flashlight struggling to pierce through the thick shadows. As I ventured further into the unknown, the air grew colder and an inexplicable heaviness pressed upon me. The surroundings were disorienting, and the absence of any discernible features added to the unsettling nature of the place. The darkness seemed to shift and contort, playing tricks on my senses. I strained to see beyond the beam of my flashlight, but the obscurity prevailed. The distant echoes of my footsteps resonated eerily creating an unsettling symphony in the void. In the midst of the darkness, I stumbled upon an old, dilapidated door. Hesitation gripped me, but an inexplicable force compelled me to open it. The door creaked open, revealing a room that defied the laws of reality. The space inside was vast, stretching beyond the confines of the building. A surreal landscape unfolded towering structures that seemed to merge with the shadows. The air was thick with an indescribable energy, and an otherworldly glow emanated from an unseen source. As I navigated through the enigmatic realm, the boundaries between space and time blurred, whispers echoed, and fleeting glimpses of distorted figures danced at the edge of my perception. I questioned 
sanity of my own senses, grappling with the surreal nature of the unfolding journey. The ground beneath me felt unstable, as if the very fabric of reality was shifting. I moved forward with trepidation, each step resonating with a peculiar resonance that heightened the disconcerting atmosphere. In the midst of the surreal landscape, a figure emerged from the shadows. It was Marcus, his eyes vacant and an ethereal glow surrounding him. His presence seemed both tangible and elusive, as if he existed in a realm beyond comprehension. I called out to him, but my words dissipated into the vast emptiness. Marcus remained silent, his gaze fixed on an unseen horizon. The inexplicable encounter left me unsettled, torn between the realms of the known and the unknowable. As I continued to navigate the mysterious landscape, the boundaries between reality and unreality became increasingly blurred. The whispers grew louder, and the distorted figures multiplied, casting elongated shadows on the surreal canvas. The journey through the unknown unfolded, revealing the intricate tapestry of a reality that defied explanation. The building, the elevator, and the dark realm intertwined in a web of enigma leaving me to grapple with the haunting mysteries that transcended the ordinary. In the heart of the surreal landscape, I confronted the shadows of the past and the uncertainties of the present. The journey into the unknown continued, and the inexplicable forces that governed the building revealed themselves in cryptic whispers and elusive figures. As I navigated the surreal realm, the boundaries between the tangible and the intangible dissolved, and the enigmatic journey unfolded with each step. The mysteries of the building, Marcus's disappearance, and the haunting encounters merged into a singular narrative, inviting me to delve deeper into the abyss of the unknown. I couldn't comprehend the surreal scene unfolding before me. The man, who resembled Marcus, continued to mimic my every move like an unsettling reflection. The atmosphere was charged with an otherworldly energy, and my sense of reality wavered in the face of the inexplicable. As I cautiously approached Marcus, the dissonance between his appearance and his bizarre actions intensified. The cold ground beneath my feet seemed to absorb the weight of the eerie encounter. The spotlight overhead created an unsettling contrast, casting an elongated shadow that mirrored the peculiar dance. Marcus, what's happening? Why are you here? I stammered, my voice trembling with a mix of fear and confusion. The numeric display on the elevator, indicating the impossible floor of 630, added to the disconcerting nature of the situation. In the dimly lit space, Marcus's back remained turned towards me. The repetitious synchronization of our movements heightened the uncanny atmosphere. Every step I took, every turn I made, Marcus mirrored with unsettling precision. As the strange dance continued, I couldn't shake the feeling that the boundaries of reality were unraveling. The repetition of actions, the impossible floor number, and the enigmatic presence of Marcus defied any logical explanation. In a moment of fear and desperation, I pleaded, Marcus, please, what is happening? Can you hear me? The only response was the echoing repetition of my own words, as if the space itself held a mirror to my thoughts. Unable to comprehend the inexplicable, I took a step back, my mind racing with a myriad of unanswered questions. The figure resembling Marcus turned towards the elevator, and a wave of realization washed over me. 
The peculiar mimicry wasn't limited to Marcus's actions. It extended to his appearance. As I observed in shock, Marcus turned, revealing his back once again. The realization struck me. The figure before me wasn't Marcus at all, but a sinister entity that mirrored my every move. Fear gripped me as the entity moved towards the elevator, and I was left paralyzed, grappling with the surreal encounter. The mimicry extended beyond mere actions. It seemed to toy with the fabric of reality itself. In the midst of the strange encounter, the entity turned towards me, and an unsettling plea escaped my lips. Wait, forgive me. I had no other option. The figure stood unmoving, its back turned, a silent sentinel in this disorienting realm that defied all logic and reason. In the eerie silence of that mysterious realm, I stood, caught between the inexplicable and the unknown. The entity resembling Marcus remained a cryptic enigma, a manifestation of the surreal forces that defied the boundaries of reality. As I retreated from the strange encounter, the echoes of my own words lingered in the dim expanse. The spotlight overhead cast shadows that seemed to dance with the secrets hidden within the void. The numeric display on the elevator continued to mock the logic of conventional floors, displaying the impossible number 630. In the face of the inexplicable, I found myself grappling with the haunting realization that this encounter surpassed the realms of reason. The mimicry extended beyond mere actions. It reached into the very fabric of existence, creating a disconcerting dance between reality and the unknown. With trepidation and a sense of foreboding, I uttered a plea to the enigmatic entity. Wait, forgive me. I had no other option. The figure stood motionless, its back turned a sentinel in this cryptic space. As I turned away from the mimicry and faced the elevator, a profound sense of uncertainty lingered. The shadows whispered secrets and the spotlight dimmed, leaving me standing at the threshold of an enigma that refused to unravel. In the wake of the surreal encounter, the elevator doors closed shrouding the mysterious figure in darkness. The journey through the unknown continued, and the echoes of that inexplicable realm reverberated in my consciousness, a haunting reminder that some mysteries defy comprehension. The enigma of the mimicry, the impossible floor, and the cryptic dance with the unknown became a part of the tapestry of my existence. As I stepped back into the familiar surroundings, the shadows of that encounter lingered, leaving me with an enduring sense of awe and unease. And so, the story concludes with a lingering question in the air, a question that echoes through the corridors of the unknown inviting those brave enough to venture into the realms where reality and the inexplicable converge.